Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at another smart home bot from the makers of the original Switch bot. But this one is specifically designed for your currents called the Switch bot currents. Let's jump into the video. If you never heard of a Switch bot, I've done a full review of them. They're awesome little tiny devices with a finger that comes out and can press anything with a button so you can make it part of your smart home. Now with the Switch bot mini hub, you can actually bring it into Lady A, Google, Siri shortcuts, IFTT, and also smart things. And with using hoops, which I've done a full review of hoops, you can actually bring in the hoops and then bring it into HomeKit. So even though it is not native to HomeKit, with a little ingenuity, you can definitely do it. Stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to be giving details on how you can win a couple of these. For full disclosure, SwitchBot did send these to me for a full honest review, but that's not going to sway my opinion in one way or another. If I don't like something, I'm definitely going to let you know. Now the SwitchBot current comes in two different colors and three different models. You can get it in white or in black. So depending on what type of current that you have, it might show up a little bit more than what's shown in my video. I have a grommet type of curtain, so this is actually installed behind it, so you're not going to see what color. But if you have a ring top or a tab top, they might show a little bit more, so the color comes in a little bit more play if you have one of those types of currents. Now I have the rod type of switch bot so it has this top piece but they also have an I rail and a U rail model so depending on what type of current that you might have you want to make sure that you pick up the right one. Inside the box you'll get the main switch bot current unit. If you happen to have a I rail or a U rail you're not going to have this part right here you're not going to have these um, railings right here. You're going to have the I rail and the U rail hooks right to the side of this. You're also going to get a bunch of these little clips that you might need, might not, depending on what type of current you already have. You have a USB-C wire, and then you might get a couple of these little white things, which I didn't know what they were at first. Actually, I was not supposed to get them at all because I got a rod type of switch bot. But if you have a I-Rail or U-Rail, they actually use to pop off the sides of these. If you try to get your finger in there, you probably break your nail and not be successful at all. So they just poke right in there in that little slot right there and you can pop off the side to make the installation a little bit easier. Now they say the battery life can last about eight months or so. I've actually been using mine for about three months and I'm only down to 79%. And I gotta say, I've been using it probably more than normal, probably four or five times a day. So I can easily see eight months, even a year. In addition, they have that solar panel. So if you want to trickle charges, I can see this lasting quite a while. On the back of the device, you have a single button and a light indicator. I do believe this is also the light sensor that they do have a great feature that will monitor the sunlight and you can actually have it automating depending on the sun level that it picks up on the outside. Now it is still on beta and I can't fully test this only because my currents face pretty much a wall with some skylights and I really didn't get a lot of sun. Now I did take this outside just to see if it would work and I did see some different readings. So I do think it will work. I just don't know if it's 100% working just yet. You can also pair this with a switch bot meter which will monitor the temperature in the room. And if it gets too hot, it can automatically shut the currents for you. When it comes to installation, it's pretty straightforward but there are a bunch of different types of currents. There's a bunch of different types of rods. So in and your scenario might be different from mine. I have a grommet type of current and my rod is pretty long. And what might happen if you have a longer rod or if you don't have one single piece rod is that you're going to have a transition from a smaller diameter to a bigger diameter and that's going to cause an issue for the switch bot. Now personally I solved that issue simply by putting that transition directly in the middle and using two switch bots that open from the middle and pushing out. That way they never hear the transition. Now I know that's not going to be feasible for everyone out there. You might only want to use one switch bot or you might not have enough room to use two switch bots or you can't adjust the rod itself totally get it now one thing that I've seen people do is tape over that transition. I'm not sure if that's going to work or not. I think the best solution if you do have to have that transition is to get a curtain ride cover. You can go Bed Bath Beyond. They have different colors that you can go over that um, rod and pretty much get rid of that transition altogether, which hopefully one of these solutions work for you. 
Now when it comes to different types of kerns, like I mentioned, I have the grommet type, which is super easy to install. It's probably the easiest. You're not gonna need any additional accessories. But if you do have a ring top, a tab top, or a back tab, you're gonna need these little clips, which they do include. You just clip this onto one of those little tabs. And you wanna make sure they're facing the right direction, just to make sure that the switch bot has room or has something to grip onto when it pushes the actual curtain. All right, let's go ahead and fully install this. First thing you wanna do is add your SwitchBot to the SwitchBot app. Go ahead and download it if you haven't already. In the top right, hit the plus, and then select what type of device you have, where you have the current. Go ahead, hit the pairing button on the back of the device, and then hit next. You'll see the LED on the back of the device start flashing. Go ahead and name the current, which I'm just gonna call this current for right now. And then they'll ask you what type of open mode that you wanna do. If you have a single bar or a single switch bot, you wanna go across the entire bar. You can pick which direction that you want it to open and close from. But in my particular case, I'm gonna be opening from the middle and using two switch bots. And what's really cool about this is the app does pair them together as one, so they work together. And if you bring them in to other systems, they actually come over into that system as one bot. All right, let's go ahead and fully install this. To do so, you need to pull these two little clips down on the back, and you want to take your two thumbs and you want to push them down towards the switch bot and then push the, the top up so they kind of lock in just like that. Now, I'm not quite sure what these clips are for. I do think it's to make sure that you get enough compression on your rod. You don't overdo it, you don't underdo it. That way, it perfectly has enough compression on your rod to open and close your curtains. Now, to install this, go between the first and second folds of your curtain and install this from the back. What you want to do is put this on the rod and you want to compress it down together until those two little clips pop off. Once those clips pop off, go ahead and push those back into their original place. Now if you have a second current on the same rod like I do and you want them to open up from the middle, go ahead and install that second switch bot on the second curtain. Next thing you wanna do is fully calibrate it and what's gonna have you do is open and close the curtains a few times just so it can count how many rotations it needs to do to open and close each one. Now these bots are Bluetooth, which means they will connect directly to your phone via Bluetooth, which has a limited range. And that might be okay for some people, but I do highly recommend that you also pick up the mini hub that will allow you to be able to control these from further distances you just put the uh, the hub in the same room and you can actually be across the house and still be able to control your curtains now that hub will also allow you to use it with lady a google ifttt smart things and it's not native to homekit but i'm going to show you how to bring it into homekit in just a couple minutes now i know a lot of people are going to use this in their bedroom and i got to warn you that these things are kind of loud so if you're a light sleeper and you want the currents to open up in the morning that noise might wake you up now personally I had to use it in performance mode I tried the silent mode but unfortunately my switch bots didn't move whatsoever they are just too heavy for the silence mode and they actually tell you this I don't know what the weight limit is for silence mode if you have light currents then the silent mode will definitely work for you I can see that it does move it's just it doesn't have enough torque for my heavy currents. Now one of the advanced features that I absolutely love in the app is the touch and go. And what this allows you to do is slightly tug on the curtain which will activate the switch bot to open or close the rest of the way. And what's also really cool is if you have a double curtain like I have, it will activate both of them so they both open and close. So if you're running out the room, you can just slightly tug it, keep on moving, you don't have to break out your phone, you don't have to ask Siri, you just keep on moving and don't even have to worry about it. SwitchBot also offers a little tiny remote that you can leave like on a coffee table. That way guests and family members can operate the currents without having the app or having to use a voice activating system. Just makes it a little bit easier. Now if you want to use this with HomeKit, it's not as easy as setting up with Alexa or Google. Those, all you need is the mini hub and the username and passwords and you can get into those accounts and set those up with those systems. But if you do want to use this with HomeKit, it is not native to HomeKit. So 
you will have to pick up a Homebridge system or HOOB system, which stands for Homebridge out of the box, which is the easiest way to set up Homebridge. I've done a full review of HOOBs. I'll leave a card right up there, so definitely check out that video if you want more information on HOOBs. Now, once you get HomeKit synced with HOOBs, there's three different ways that you can bring your SwitchBot into HOOBs, which will bring it over to HomeKit. The first way is to use the SwitchBot plugin for HOOBs. To do so, all you need to do is install the SwitchBot Bluetooth plugin, and then there's three different commands that you'll have to enter. These three commands are not listed in the plugin. I think one is, the other two are not, so I'll list them down below in the description. Once you've done those three commands, go ahead and restart the service, and now you can go to your configuration page. All you need here is the top part of the configuration, and if you want to use the currents only, you only need the currents part, but if you want to add SwitchBot bot to it, you have to add the bot part or the meter part. All you need is that specific part of where you want to add to HomeKit. So to make this easy, I'm just going to copy everything here and paste it in between the two brackets and then remove the bots that I don't need. And then I'm going to go to the SwitchBot app and get the Bluetooth MAC address and input that into here. And when it came to the scan duration, I left this at 2000, even though I did test it at 1000, I tested at 10,000. And what this does is just allow it to have more time time to discover your device so so if you find out that times out too fast you can definitely increase that number here and then don't forget to save your changes and also restart the service so it refreshes everything a couple things about using this plugin is one that does use the Bluetooth within the hoobs box so the hoobs box does have to be within Bluetooth range of your switch bots which is about 30 feet or less also I noticed that sometimes it did not always take so when I hit the tile sometimes it didn't not always open and close my currents. I don't know what the issue is or where the communication failure is. So if you're going to be using this within scenes or automations, just to let you know, you do want to be aware that it might miss. Hopefully in their future, they'll fix this issue. Now the second way is the same way that I set up the original SwitchBots, and that is through SmartThings. To do so, you would need a SwitchBot Mini Hub, a Hoob system, and also a SmartThings Hub. It actually took me about 25 to 30 minutes to set this up through SmartThings and through hoobs um, even that is quite easy there are instructions on the hoobs website that is step by step I'm not going to go into details here it's simply because the instructions are quite detailed uh, but there are a lot of different steps that you do have to go through you just need to follow those steps and you'll have no problem whatsoever once you got hoobs and smart things set up all you need to do to bring these devices into HomeKit is to go back into smart things go into your smart apps, go into Homebridge, and then select which SmartThings devices you want to bring into HomeKit. Once you've completed that, go into HomeKit, go into your default room, and you'll see your device. Now, this system is also not 100% reliable. Sometimes there is a miss when you hit the button. Sometimes you have to press it two or three times. I'm not quite sure what the issue is. Even from SmartThings, when you try to hit it, it doesn't always take. Hopefully, they will fix this issue in the near future. The nice thing about using this up is that your who Hoops box does not need to be within Bluetooth range because it's using that mini hub. So you can move your Who's box back to your network rack or wherever you have it in your house to be hardwired. And you can have the mini hub within Bluetooth range of your SwitchBot currents. And the third way is through IFTTT, which is now a paid monthly service. I wish they didn't go that route, but they did. So to do so, you will need a SwitchBot mini hub and a Hoob system and an IFTT account. My friend Shane Watley, he set up his original SwitchBots using IFTTT. I'm going to leave a link down below where you can see how he set this up with IFTTT. And now that this is set up with HomeKit, you can use scenes and automations as long as you're aware of those little hiccups. And you can also say, open the studio curtains. On it. Okay.
And now it's time for the giveaway brought to you by SwitchBot. We're gonna have two winners, one on Instagram and one on Twitter. Each winner winning two SwitchBot Kerns, one mini hub and one remote. Now again, there'll be two winners, one on Instagram and one on Twitter. I'll leave a link down below to the full rules and regulations. You will have to be 18 years or older. And this is a international giveaway, which the link down below will tell you what country SwitchBot is able to ship to. Good luck to everybody. By the way, feel free to enter on both sites if you want to. I want to thank SwitchBot for setting up this giveaway and also thank them for creating such a great new bot. And I can't wait to see what else they create. Maybe a uh, bot that can open and close a door automatically. I don't know. Just thinking of some stuff. I also want to thank my Patreon members. Some of these guys will automatically get entered into the giveaway just because they're at a certain level. If you want to learn some other benefits of becoming a Patreon member, check that link out right there. If you guys want to see a lot more HomeKit content, I got a lot more stuff coming, so make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. And if you want to see the next video in my HomeKit series, check that out right there. I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.